welcome you here to the council meeting tonight as we call to order our uh, regularly scheduled council meeting. Uh, we note that we have uh, six members of the council here. Uh, Steve Vincent is excused and will not be with us. Uh, with that, we have a full quorum and we will um, now go to our opening ceremony. Uh, we go to Council Member Karen Lang. Could you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Uh, we do not uh, have any scout groups. Do they, do they do stop coming during the summer? They're all on campus. Uh, that's why. Then with that, we go to the next item on our agenda, uh, which is the comment period. And we've had some people sign up, I believe. And so uh, we will go to the public for those comments. And we have one, I guess, who signed up. If anyone else, was there anyone else who wanted to speak? Well, if so, you better let us know. Otherwise, Chris, if you'll come up. Well, thank you, Mayor, Council, Chris Gambrulis, I Redevelopment. I'm speaking to you now because my the item for I redevelopment is scheduled as a resolution item, which is not a public comment period. So I thought I would just, uh, if you wouldn't mind, take a couple of minutes. I hopefully everyone got the email that I sent out last week. I guessed on some of your emails, so hopefully you you all got them. Um, I didn't want to go on the even though your website is lovely. I thought I'd do something a little different. So, um, but just wanted to give you an opportunity to think through. Um, the development agreement for Park Vista, I know that it had some history here, that there were other applicants that came in looking for rezone application. That, that wasn't what, our, what we wanted to do. But we purchased this property from ATK um, back in March. We started meeting with the staff in February, made our preliminary plat application in May. And we are just, if you've looked at the plat, <clears throat> and you've seen where we have those five or, well, actually we have like seven roads that are existing locations that come into the property, the feet of the property. And we're trying to make connections to interconnect all of those neighborhoods um, with ours. Um, and, uh, but that means that, that we are constrained by our geometry of the site and then where the roads come in. And in some cases, it forces us to have very shallow lots. So when you have a 10,000 square foot lot that's only 90 feet deep, Going to put a very wide lot. We call them hot dog lots. They're just they're they're shallow. They're long, um, and in some cases we have 90 feet of depth. In some cases we have 94 feet of depth, 96. Um, we've got a corner lot where we've got two lots that come in, what two roads that come in, and, and we're just stuck. I mean, those are uh, other than blocking those roads off, which we think is is not a public service. Um, that's the only way to 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 actually fix that is if we could ignore the outside roads. Um, so what that, what that does is it leaves us with, um, in many cases, as little as 40 feet of buildable depth. So just to give you, you know, that's a double wide trailer, is 40 feet deep. Um, a lot of, there are a lot of 40 foot deep houses in West Valley, and actually all over the valley for that matter. Um, but they're the Utah split, they're the split level homes, um, because they don't take a lot of depth. Um, and when you're building two-story homes and ramblers and you have a 24 foot deep garage you know to go back behind the house and only be able to go 15 feet doesn't leave you with much house so that's the reason that we're asking for this setback exception on the front to go to 20 feet we're not asking for an exception on the on the rear yard setback um, so that is so in one bucket there is that issue um, and uh, it, it it's going to help us build bigger homes so hopefully that's a enough of a 
enticement to you that will now have homes that are 50 feet deep uh, that will fit on lots that are 10,000 square feet and that's that's quite reasonable the other issue that's in the development agreement it came up after the fact after we made our application and, and uh, actually we were really kind of caught off guard at the Planning Commission was the issue on the architect the exterior materials and and in the meantime in the interim um, you all had passed a, an ordinance uh, changing the exterior materials I know it was very you had a lot of conversations about that stucco and brick and hardy cement fiber um, I'll, tr I'll try not to call it hardy board because that is a that's a brand name like Kleenex right so it's but it's a cement fiber siding um, and uh, so we left our application the same because we were in the process of doing that all of our economics were based upon the, the house plans that we have so we would ask for your consideration um, to allow us to build the homes that are in our catalog with the exterior materials the way that they are um, the way it's been uh, um, presented um, I understand that you know you're, there's been a lot of debate about that and um, I, I do want to just say that I, I had the opportunity to go on a bus with um, Steve Vincent and Corey Rushton um, about a month ago there, there was a, League of, a National League of Cities and Towns conference 30 seconds and there were representatives from all over the country and Corey called me and said we would like to show them some of the best projects that we've done in West Valley we went to Highbury and went to Westridge we bought Westridge from you and those are the homes that we want to build here with those same designs and the same exterior materials so I would just leave that for your consideration and thank you when the resolution comes up I appreciate a positive uh, a positive approval thank you thank you Either with eight seconds to spare is there anyone there that's here to speak? Seeing that well. Then we go uh, next to our city manager for comments. Thanks, sir. I have none tonight. I'm good. Thank you. To the city council for comments. I don't see any, but I, Mr. Pyle, I do have a question for you uh, since it was brought up in that discussion, and that is uh, roads. Uh, are we required to make all of those connecting roads? Boy, seven in a subdivision that size, is that typical? Uh, you know, it seems kind of high. Maybe it would be better. I mean, I'm actually not comfortable to answer the question, Mayor, so I could either have Mr. Pastor come back up and answer, or maybe when we get to that item, we want to talk about it there, we can do it then. Yeah, maybe if you would be prepared to, okay. at that point, be nice. All right, then we go on to item number six on our agenda, uh, ordinance number 14-36, amending our municipal code uh, to modify the franchise tax levy rate. I believe this was uh, a required change based upon state statute. It went from, was it 4 to 3.5? Uh, yes, that's correct, Mayor. Yeah. And so um, we also mentioned here for those listening in as well as our couple of visitors here, all of these items that we are now reviewing we discussed last week in the city council meeting and had thorough discussions on them so uh, it is not that we don't take time to review those but we may speak of them less than you might expect here especially on some of these that are routine uh, like this one we need to change it to come in through to put our code into agreement and it doesn't change our revenue based just upon the way things will work. So with that, we'll put it to the City Council uh, for comment or action, Ordinance Number 14-36. Mayor, I would move for approval of Ordinance 14-36. Councilwoman Lang uh, has placed the motion before us. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Councilman Bueller. Motion is properly before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving uh, Ordinance 14-36 to change the franchise tax levy rate in our municipal code, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. We go on to resolutions. 
item number seven on our agenda. Uh, resolution 14-133 to, to approve a franchise agreement for a telecommunications network in the city. And uh, actually, I'm actually going to ask Mr. Pyle to actually uh, introduce this one and remind us of it. I went through it and uh, it's not a big thing, this is a routine, we've done it for other companies, but because it involves telecommunications, would you just take two minutes? And you bet, sir. Um, so Syringa so Networks, they are proposing to come in and construct and maintain a telecommunications network. That's the purpose of the franchise agreement. We used to actually see quite a few of these come through back in, well, shortly after the passage of the 1996 Telecommunications Act, you saw a number of them come through. That kind of tailed off over time as some of these businesses uh, came and went, were able to or weren't able to actually construct these networks. Recently we've seen an increase in the number of applications or at least interest in providing applications to the city for this Syringa is actually the first one of that batch that's come through. There are three of them currently under consideration. Uh, just to be clear, so everybody is clear, because we also at the same time have this conversation going on about how West Valley City is participating in our own uh, telecommunications network through Utopia. This has nothing to do with that. Syringa is a completely private entity that is conducting their own business. Um, they may or they may not actually come and actually construct, construct a network, but this franchise agreement would uh, put together the the, the framework under which they could get things like uh, permits, road cuts, that sort of thing to be able to put that, that network together. Okay, thank you. To the council then for action or comment. Mayor, I move for approval of resolution 14-133. Okay, Councilman uh, Nordfeldt has made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Councilwoman Lang seconded that. The motion is properly before us. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving resolution 14-133 to approve a franchise agreement with Syringa Network for their for a possible telecommunications network in the city, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. We now go to resolution 14-134 to approve change order number one to a contract contract with Kilgore Contracting for our 2014 asphalt overlay project. Uh, this, as I recall, was uh, we already have a plan for next year. This is a change order to that plan. And uh, uh, these are coming from our Class C road funds an additional 312000 although it uh, does require us to approve the contract, it does not change our budget. Fortunately, we don't have to raise any extra money for it, but it allows us to spend that money which has been previously identified on that, and certainly there are many areas of the city that can use it. With that, uh, to the council then for comment or action. Mayor, happy to see that 40th West will be paved between 41st South and 35th South. I move for approval of resolution 14 134. Do we have a motion before us? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Councilman Bueller's motion, seconded by Councilman Hill, uh, is properly before us. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll place that for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we go to resolution 14-135 to authorize the purchase of a street sweeper for use by the Public Works Department. Uh, and this is on a regular rotation. Uh, I believe we have four of those, and the schedule is we replace one each year uh, before the maintenance costs outweigh the benefit and to keep uh, an effective program of keeping our streets clean throughout the city. And uh, so, and again, uh, there, uh, that comes, I believe that the net cost of that is 145975 and so we will be turning in the old one as a trade-in, 
anything else there? Uh, I think that's everything. With that, then, to the council for comment or action. Motion to approve resolution 14-135. Second. We have the motion by Councilman Hume to approve resolution 14-135 and a second by Councilman Rushton. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving resolution 14-135 to purchase a street sweeper for the Public Works Department, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes unanimously. We go to resolution 14-136. This is a uh, cooperative agreement with the Drug Enforcement Administration with various government entities uh, across the valley. Many of the cities in West Valley, the Department of Corrections, including up into Summit County, and of course with Salt Lake City and their Metropolitan Narcotics Task Force. Uh, we have participated in the past, past, and I believe this, I don't know, I think this is just a continuation, is that right, Mr. Pyle? That's correct, sir. And uh, it is important that we participate in this. Uh, unfortunately, those in the criminal element don't know city boundaries, and so working together on some of these where there are uh, criminal acts and where they do things Cross city boundaries seems very appropriate and beneficial to our city. So we have that before us. So to the council for discussion or action. Mayor, Councilman Rushton. I'd like just to ask one, one question here, a multi part question to, to the staff on this. Going through the, the agreement, I noticed that uh, you know, we, uh, uh, as we have in the past, uh, we'll pro be providing one uh, task force agent to this. Have we? I guess my question is twofold. Have we selected that agent, and what qualifications do we normally look for on assigning that officer to this position? Okay, thank you, uh, Councilman Rushton. First, I'd like to make a slight clarification. We're actually, we have been one in the past. We're actually increasing, at least for a temporary period, we're going to have, and it might be, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what temporary is. I'll, speak, I'll let the Chief speak to that, but we're actually going to increase that number to four for the time being, at least. Uh, to the other questions as to has that person been selected and, and uh, the qualifications for that, I'll refer that to the chief. Yes. Chief, would you introduce yourself? And yes, Lee Rosso, uh, Chief of Police for the West Valley City Police Department. Uh, the individuals are currently being screened. We did put out a transfer announcement for our task force officers, uh, and they're being evaluated. They're also being evaluated by the joint staff at the DEA task force. Uh, we're looking to this to be a long-term assignment. Uh, it is just beneficial for us to stay in, uh, in close contact and working relationships with our federal partners and our, our regional partners uh, dealing with these drug cartels and networks. Okay, thank you. Councilman Rushton? I, I guess just, did, does it not, I, uh, with page two of the agreement that it does spell out that we're only participating with one, does that cause any concern moving we'll, forward? Or we'll just, check it out. Just, a, for just something that helps. Yeah, we'll check it. Okay. Uh, with that, Mayor, I would move approval of resolution 14-136. Motion is before us. Do we have a second? Second. Councilman Bueller, a second. Uh, motion now is complete. Uh, any further discussion or comment? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving Resolution 14-136, a cooperative agreement with the DEA and other cities and entities uh, in the Valley for a uh, combined drug enforcement task force, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. So next we go to resolution 14-137 to approve an agreement with DLS Consulting to provide professional services during the next fiscal, well, I guess the current fiscal year that we're in, we're now in. Uh, but this is primarily focused on the legislative session and other related items uh, for someone to represent us there and assist in those issues facing the city at the legislature. Uh, I believe our primary contact there is Dave, 
David Stewart. Yes, sir. And uh, so with that, to the council, and this is a continuation. We've had, we have one year agreements with him. The last one is complete. We're completing, and this will extend in another year. And from what they, we was indicated, we are pleased with the work that is being done. It meets the requirements that we place upon them. And so, to the council then for discussion or action. Mayor, I move for approval of resolution 14-136. The motion is before us. Do we have a second? I think it 137, should be 137. Sorry. 137. I'll second it. 137. Okay, yes. It was 137. That was corrected by the maker of the motion. So now we have it there. We have it properly before us. Seconded the right resolution. And so for any further comments or discussion? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving resolution 14-137, uh, an agreement with the ALS Consulting for Professional Services, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. We'll move on to resolution 14-138. And that is to uh, the one that we have had a public comment on. This is... Uh, authorizing the city to enter into a development agreement with Ivory Development. This is the property at 4100 South and 70th West, approximately that uh, corner area, most of it, uh, 26 acres. Um, with this one, because we've had uh, some extensive discussion on that, Mr. Powell, maybe uh, briefly summarize uh, from there, our discussion be, from our previous meeting. Would you mind doing that? You know, Mayor, I would do that, but it's probably a little in more competent hands to turn that over for either Mr. Pastrick or Mr. Lee. Okay, if you Mr. would mind, Mayor. Mr. Pastrick, if you would give a brief, not your... Mr. Lehman, sorry. Oh, Mr. Lehman's yeah. going to do that. Okay. I'll get it right one minute. You want the smart Steve or the better looking Steve? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Steve Lehman with the Community and Economic Development Department. Um, as was mentioned, this application is a request from Irie Development for a project to be known as Park Vistas, uh, as the mayor mentioned, located at 4100 South, approximately 70th West. When Irie approached the city about developing this property, as Mr. Gambrellis mentioned, in his public comments, um, the site is a little bit challenging because all the property surrounding it is on R18 or smaller. And so the road alignments don't lend themselves to a larger lot subdivision. Um, this is a property that is currently zoned R110. Ivory Homes is proposing to develop the property as it's currently zoned, R110. However, there are three things that they approached the staff about um, requesting a little bit of relief. The first is, in the far northwest corner of the subdivision, um, there is a lot that has two intersecting streets. And that lot, it's impossible for that lot to reach the square footage requirement in the zone of 10,000 square feet. The lot is approximately 9,600 square feet and is shy of the 90 foot frontage requirement uh, of the R110 zone. So it's shy by a few feet. The second request is that, as Mr. Gamerlis mentioned, the lots, uh, due to the existing road locations, are rather shallow, uh, 90 feet, 93 feet, and 97 feet. And so, uh, given the depth of their homes and, the, and their catalog to reach some of the larger housing plans, which uh, we as a city would appreciate, they would like to reduce the front setback by five feet. Um, I believe in Mr. Gamberless's email to the council, it was also mentioned that the rear setback would be reduced, but that is not the case. Uh, that would allow them to build a little bit larger home. And the third uh, area that they're looking for relief on is the lot depth requirement along 4100 South. Because this road is an arterial street and it is a double frontage situation where you would have lots um, backing on to 4100 South, the city ordinances require a little bit larger depth. And that depth is to provide a little bit greater setback so as to provide a little bit more of a buffer. 
In this case, um, the lots are approximately 107 feet deep. And the problem is if you were to move that road over, you would destroy the, the developability of those lots on the north side of the other road. So as uh, Mr. Pastrick and myself uh, visited about this, we felt comfortable in going down a development agreement uh, situation with Ivory. Um, in consideration of those offsets, Ivory Homes is proposing their catalog of homes, as Mr. Gamerlis mentioned, um, keeping the stucco as a primary building material as opposed to the, the percentage of, of material that we currently have uh, in the recently adopted ordinance. They are also proposing to dedicate <coughs> excuse me, a portion of the park property, as we've seen last week, as well as providing to the city a 15-foot uh, walkway so the residents living in the eastern part of the subdivision as well as those adjacent subdivisions have better access into the park. Uh, Masonry Wall will also be constructed along 4100 south so as to provide that buffer uh, given the reduced setback um, from the lot depth. And those are the, the three primary uh, requests that uh, are being made as part of this development agreement. Okay. And uh, I'd raised a question on the roads. Would you address that? Yes. The subdivision ordinance does have a provision that requires any road that is a stub road to an undeveloped property to either continue on as a dedicated right of way or terminate in a cul de sac. Um, we do not like to see roads that just stop. It's challenging for um, improvements such as stormwater uh, drainage if it's a surface drainage situation. Uh, in addition, it's a challenging uh, turnaround for either garbage collection, emergency services. So we do have a provision that requires that stub roads either terminate in a cul-de-sac or extend onto additional uh, rights of way in the city. Okay, thank you. Uh, to the council. Uh, Steve? Yeah, so there might be some more questions. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it very much. A question about the park. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. We're not buying the um, paying money for the park, correct? Like, because I didn't mean, in a study meeting, we're talking about, as you know, it's a Newton property. We, we discussed in a study meeting, we have to pay $12,000 or something. But here, we're not paying anything, correct? Correct. The park is dedicated and the, the little half circle, um, as we've looked at it, we believe that when that piece was platted, there is a roadway that aligns up with that to the east. We felt that it was probably anticipated that a cul-de-sac would, would come in that area. So it was platted that way many years ago, um, but Ivory is willing to give that to the city as built as part of the city park. And then they would provide the 15-foot access into the park as well, but we are not expecting um, Ivory is not asking the city for funds for that Thank property. You. Okay, Councilman Bueller. Just a few comments. Um, I appreciate Ivory Homes and the quality developments that they bring to our city and uh, this um, development in particular, they are not asking for a zone change. That's what I think uh, most of us want. Um, there are some challenges with this property. We're basically trying to fit a square peg into a slightly smaller square hole. It's not um, a round hole, but it's a little bit different than what we would do if we just lived in a perfect world. With re uh, respect to the requests, I'm certainly fine with a lot 20 exception. I understand that it's a, um, you know, different than all of the other lots. I'm okay with the setbacks. Uh, so that we can fit the lots in with the roads. I'm okay with the 4100 South, with the uh, masonry wall, although I would want some trees perhaps uh, along that wall so that it's even more buffered from the street. But um, don't, the one thing that I would have issue with is the change in the building materials. Um, we have recently, and with much effort, tried to increase our standards and not that Ivory Homes don't, in most respects, meet our standards or exceed our standards, but I hesitate very much at creating a precedence shortly after we have gone through our point system and, and spent that effort that uh, 
we are not serious about those kinds of regulations and, and upgrades that we have requested. Those are my comments. Thank you. Further comments? Councilman Rushton. Here, I'll throw in a few comments and then just make a motion because we have uh, talked about this application, I think, quite a bit, and then kind of by default with some of the other developments going on in the city address, you know, some of the, the issues that have gone on uh, with it and, and where we're at and where we're trying to get to. Um, as Mr. Gambrilla stated, that uh, as the mayors and council members from various cities came through, uh, you know, the, the showcase neighborhoods of West Valley City were uh, in large part the ivory subdivisions and this one uh, will no doubt uh, fit, fit in with uh, their repertoire of work and uh, will also be a landmark uh, spot for our city so I'm excited to move forward and uh, and uh, get them on their way to making this the, the subdivision that uh, it could be so uh, without uh, hashing some of the, the points that uh, Councilman Bueller did that um, I, I feel that I'm, and that the council's probably on a lot of those uh, same pages um, with that. So I would just like to move that we approve the development agreement um, with uh, a couple of, of uh, quick exceptions, namely that uh, item nine would also in, uh, provide a, a street city planning plan for the backs of 4100 South um, to address those lots not being as deep, and then uh, remove all uh, exceptions uh, from the development, uh, the development agreement uh, regarding uh, exceptions for our exterior building materials. Motion is before us. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? Councilman Lang? So the street, tr the street trees are on the resident side of the fence the center block wall, not the street side, correct? Correct. I okay. So, yeah. You know, it's, it's somewhat, just to the comment, this would be something that Steve and, and the applicant will go through, but it, it, it's, it kind of includes it, but it kind of doesn't, to where it says um, there'll be a street tree planning plan for development, and they'll be along all residential roads. And so, I, I'm, just, I'm assuming it means fronts, but... Um, I think with this is also the, the back with 4100 South and it being a little bit uh, smaller and also just backs on 4100 South, which is also another one of our discussions of just uh, the character and makeup of that street would be good. Further comments? With that then, let's see, we had a uh, motion by Corey Rushton and the second by Councilwoman Lang. Or, Councilman Jules. Okay. So it's properly before us. See no further discussion. We'll place it for a vote. All in favor of approving Ordinance 14-138, a development agreement with Ivory Development, uh, 4100 South 70th West, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously. With that, we go to item number eight. Uh, Application S-9-2014, final plat approval for summer subdivision at 3662 South 60th West. And I've been too involved. I'm going to need a little help uh, on these. I guess I should have reviewed this agenda more than I did for tonight. Uh, if you could ask me about Macquarie, I could tell you all about it. But, uh, this one up. And so, rather than delay that, Mr. Pyle, would you just introduce that? Sure. Get caught up here. You bet. Uh, we have an application by Mr. Austin Summers. This is a final plat approval. And uh, we're talking about two lots on just under half an acre. If I could get the picture up, it would come up. I could probably remember with that introduction, then, me being the only one whose computer is not working fast. Okay, there it is. Now we're in. Finally got it up. Uh, to the council for discussion or action. 
Councilman Rush. I have one one further question on this. Uh, uh, under the <coughs> under the uh, staff agency concerns, it it talks about uh, let's see under Public Works it says authorization uh, required of ditch water users. Um, where do we get the authorization from on that? I mean, does that have to be everybody that uses water from that has to sign off on it, or is it a, a majority, or is it the the company that would be in charge of it? That's a very good question, Councilman Rushton. I would want to refer that one to either Mr. Lehman or Mr. Willardson. Mr. Lehman is probably quickest and best suited, however. I'm not even sure how many this would affect, but. That's a good question. Um, because we don't know every situation that exists with existing water situations, irrigation water, um, we have a standard condition that we require the developer, if they have irrigation systems in their property, to seek out those uh, canal companies, irrigation companies, ditch masters, to show them how they intend to handle the, the irrigation water and or tail water that may um, impact the property. So it may not be a condition that's applicable to this particular development. It's really a, a catch-all condition just to ensure that we're protected. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Further discussion or comment? Action. May I move for approval of application S-9-2014. Councilman Bueller places the motion before us. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Councilwoman Lang. Motion is properly before us. Any further discussion or comment? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor of application S9 2014, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes unanimously in favor. Uh, we now, get, now go to uh, application S10 2014 by Paul Thomas. And this is for uh, Apple Orchard Estates, 3610 West and 60th, excuse me, 3610 South and 60th West. Get this one up again. Technology's <coughs> great for which things. Okay. And again, uh, Mr. Powell, would you take and do a brief introduction on sure, this? Sure, you bet. Uh, no problem, Mayor. So this is another final plat approval. I think you mentioned that. This one's slightly larger than the last one that we just considered at 16 lots under, on under just six acres. Uh, it's an infill subdivision that was rezoned some years ago and it's just actually now coming to fruition from a development standpoint. Okay. Thank you for keeping me on task here, or helping me. Uh, then to the council for discussion or action. Mayor, I would move for approval, approval of application S-10-2014. Okay, the motion is before us. Do we have a second? I'll second. Council, Councilman Rushton has the second. The motion is properly before us. Do we have any further discussion? I would just point out that uh, as we discussed in the in our study meeting last week that although it's zoned as R18 the lot sizes range range from a little over 11,000 uh, square feet to 15,000 square feet and I think it's roughly around 12,000 so um, some some good sizes here in Apple Orchard Estates thank you further comment <clears throat> seeing none we'll place it for a vote all in favor of application S-10-2014. Final plat approval of Apple Orchard Estates at 3610 West 60th. No, I keep saying it. 3610 South, 60th West. Please say aye. 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 Most opposed say no. The motion passes unanimously. We now go to our consent calendar. We have five items on our consent calendar. A routine easement agreement, that's 14-139, a storm drain easement for the school district, 14140, uh, a delay agreement for some property, 14-141, 14-142, uh, the city manager's appointment of Alan Pierce, Clean and Beautiful Committee, 
and then 14 143 another clean and beautiful committee appointment terry may pierce do you want to take those individually if not make a motion for all together mayor i i would move approval of the five resolutions of our consent agenda we have the motion before us by councilman rushton second second by councilman bueller it's properly before us any further discussion seeing none we'll place it for a vote all in favor of Approving the resolutions on our consent calendar, all five, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. Motion passes unanimously. Consent calendar is done. Then we go to item number 10 on our agenda, unfinished business. This is application GPZ-6-2013. This is the property... Uh, and there are three different ordinances here that we will deal with, 1434, 35, and 126, but this is the property at 4758 West, 4100 South. Then to the council for comment or action. Councilman Young. Uh, motion to approve the uh, public application number GPZ-6-2013 Now I think we need to take three separate motions here so this would okay. be a motion on ordinance 14-34 So which is ordinance number 14-34 yeah. Okay That motion is before us we have a second. I'll second that. And on its own change, correct? It's the no. general plan amendment. General plan. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Yeah, general plan. So we have that. Councilwoman Lang seconds that. We have the motion properly before us. Further discussion? Councilman Rush. Thank you. Uh, seeing as there's three items on this, I'll, it, I'll try to adjust my comments to fit all of them. This first one with the, did I say two or there's, there's three? Uh, the first one with the general plan change is uh, I think the easy, obvious, no brain one that um, you know, is, it was, was I think in the back of everyone's head for a general plan change. And really even the uh, amendment um, on the zone change to match what's going on in the other four corners is it's pretty easy. So the one that uh, I s still struggle with is the, the actual development agreement once we get down to the bottom one and you know, part of part of the, uh, the the problem with it, as I brought up in the other meetings and even last week, was just uh, how the the plans to integrate it more with the library complex. You know, there is it, uh, and it seems like by default there's kind of not a plan. It's just kind of to go for it. And in fact, I even took matters in the hands and called the county, you know, library people, to see if I get an answer to where you know they're even aware of this. What uh, you know, where where they would like to see things go. What they're for. What they're against. And you know, didn't um, didn't receive an answer on that as as of right now even, and so um, so I would just urge approval of the first two items, and then we get to the third items. I guess I would like to have some convincing to to go along with the uh, on the, the development side of it. So Thank you for further discussion, Councilwoman Lang. So one question, Corey, did anybody have an answer on removing the fence? Because no, and I mean, this is, I guess, sort of the confusion is that, you know, we've heard that maybe the applicant has had discussions, we've heard that, you know, maybe the city staff's had discussions, and then, you know, the county, like I said, I've, hasn't got any discussions on it. So I just would hate to think that we're going to move forward and pass that to where it's basically just a lot of, I could maybe hearsay, you know, on it that, you know, oh, I thought you checked, oh, I thought you checked, but, oh, I thought you checked, you know, and, and really not having the, the definitive answer on that. So that's, you know, that's the large, large chunk of it. I mean, I'd always like to hear your comments just on the rest of the development agreement, you know, as, as we go forward that we've talked about pitch and some of the other stuff. But I think that's, that's my main question. Because I think if it's, we're going to take it to be commercial or residential commercial, like somehow it should meld into the neighborhood and not, you know, be East and West Berlin, you know, of sorts. So. And Councilman Bueller. And my thought on this, uh, on all of these items, is the same as I expressed before, that I'm opposed to the parcel-by-parcel parcel 
decision making on 4100 South, we ought to take an overall look at it and make an overall decision rather than one parcel at a time, even though I'll throw in the caveat that uh, changing this particular corner to commercial would seem to make sense. Thank you. Further discussion? And let's see, we did have a motion and a second on this, so. On, on uh, just the first, the first item, the general plan. So we are just doing Ordinance 14-34, so we'll place that for a vote. All in favor of the general plan change, please say aye. 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 Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Okay, thank you. Opposed? No. No. Yeah. I'll vote no also. Yes, uh, when there's doubt, I would like to do a roll call. It's easy when it's unanimous. Let's do a roll call and just make sure you get it. Mrs. Thank Lane? Aye. Mr. Buehler? No. Mr. Hume? Yes. Mr. Rushton? No. Mr. Nordfeld? Aye. Mayor Bigelow? Aye. So it's three to three. And two to four. No, no two to four. Oh, okay. Guess I should have paid more attention. Okay. Then with that, uh, we move to our next item on the agenda. And that, and that passed with two. So we are now at resolution 14 35. Uh, this is a zoning change for the same property. It's currently zoned R18. <coughs> Neighborhood commercial C1. To the council for comment or action. Mr. Council Mayor? Un Un Lang. I would move for approval of ordinance 14 35 as I do not see residential working in this location any longer. We have the motion before us. Do we have a second? Second. Councilman Nordfeld's a second. The motion is properly before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll place it for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Excuse me. Uh, if, with the council's permission, I know we're in the middle of the vote, but I should. I think I'm going to do roll call vote on each of these with the council's permission. Let's just do roll call. Mrs. Lane? Aye. Mr. Buehler? No. Mr. Hume? Yes. Mr. Rushton? No. Mr. Nordfeld? Aye. Mayor Bigelow? No. Excuse me. I I voted on the wrong one. Yes on this one. I think, sorry, not announcing my next vote. But <laughs> I apologize for that confusion. So I was the same forty-two. I was the same forty-two and passes. Now we take resolution number fourteen dash one twenty-six. Authorizing the city to enter into a development agreement on the same property that we have been discussing to the council for discussion or action. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion for continuance to give the. My concern with this development agreement is I'm not comfortable with the exterior on 30. Um, 4100 South, and so I'd like a better updated what would fit our ordinances there, and then also that would give time for either staff or the applicant to get with the county. I know one of the big concerns on that property is the fence, and if that should be removed or not, and if there's any inclination on the county's part to be willing to do that, just to kind of get rid of the dead spots to make it more visually acceptable to some of the members. So I would say date non-specific so that they have the time to address both of those issues. Okay, that motion is appropriate. Boris, do we have a second?
Councilman Hume. May I make a comment? Well, I'll second it, and then you will have to. I think we've, okay. yeah, because if, if we don't get a second, then it dies for lack of a second. But Councilman Rustin has seconded the motion. The motion is properly before us. Now, further discussion. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, uh, I was thinking about that a lot, uh, about the, uh, the fence between the property and the library, Hunter Library. Uh, but to be honest with you, the most I'm concerned about when there were houses there is the quarter then, the more opportunity for people to do some stupid thing there than the risk, I mean, the commercial zoning. The reason because uh, if commercial zoning will have more people in and out a lot, and that will eliminate that uh, problem with the big concern about the fence, just the concrete fence, and uh, maybe people they hide behind, maybe behind the bus or maybe behind the fence and, and uh, create some problem. Um, but I, I, I see that um, residential is more like uh, two houses that old ladies he had in the past. She has more problem at if we have a commercial uh, district there because, like I said, some more people in and out. Then and I think that will. Um, in order, the other thing is that we we cannot find the resolution or we cannot find the way to solve problem because um, my colleagues there, Cody Russ and we ask people around there and they have uh, give no definition or no not not basically no resolution about what the fence there, they cannot give the concrete answer for um, that the, uh, the concrete wall there. Um, so I think it's, um, there's no concern about the fence if we have a commercial zoning. Thank you. Further discussion? No, I, I guess just to, thank you. Uh, just to go along with that, I mean, maybe there is a totally legitimate reason or use, or um, you know, maybe it's going to be prominently displayed as, as a city art at some point. Like, I don't know, but I just would hate to plan something and get into an uh, agreement without having all the facts before us. And so I think the councilman. Uh, Lang is wise to maybe just give it some time to look at it as well as you know if, if there's some other issues that um, she's concerned with or somebody else just as far as the the, the frontage on it that um, you know it's it's commercial now it's the zone's been changed the plan's been changed it's going to go forward with commercial so if we're going to do that let's just uh, try to get the best possible product that uh, and use that we can out of it going forward with the agreement so I speak in favor of uh, continuance. Okay, further discussion? Seeing none, we'll uh, take a roll call vote. Mrs. Lane? Aye. Mr. Buehler? Aye. Mr. Hume? Aye. Mrs. Lane? No. Mr. Rushton? Aye. Mr. Northdown? Aye. Mayor Bigelow? Aye. We would uh, ask the staff to you know, work on this and uh, see if we can get those questions and concerns answered working with members of the council and uh, uh, absolutely mayor we'll be glad to do that and i think those are fairly easily addressed or at least clear questions so we can get the answers back on that i might just mention on the applicant's behalf they also have tried to get in touch with the county and the library system for an answer along those lines as well and they haven't been answered either so apparently we just need more time to work through the process thank you very much uh, that motion passes then, and uh, we will have that continuance at a future date. Uh, I believe that there is no need for an executive session that I'm aware of, uh, but I, oh, I did remember I do need to have to pass along some information to Chief Russell and Mr. Willardson, Mr. Pyle, if that's okay right after this meeting. 
With that then, any further business from the council or comments? Seeing none, we'll accept one last motion. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passed unanimously. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.